Nicola, Nicola, Nicola. It's time for another Nicola video. And for that, we're breaking out the all brand new, allegedly, in my opinion, blah, blah, blah t shirt. Because there's going to be a lot of it in this video. So sit back, relax. And let's hit the road. My name is Tom Nash and I quit my corporate job as a senior financial analyst to break down companies for you. If there's one thing you need to know about me, I don't take bullshit from anybody. I was about to make a funny video. I was like, let's make it funny because this whole earnings call from Nikola was such an intergalactic zoo. It was just amusing and funny and pathetic. I was like, this is going to be great content. It's like a good comedy, right? It's like a Coen Brothers movie. What the hell was that? Especially when you read the financials. But the deeper I got into the financials, the clearer it became to me that there's a huge change going on that we need to talk about. And there's an item we cannot ignore. It's huge for the company and the shareholders. And we need to talk about it before we get to the funny part, which will be part of this video. I promise this video is going to be hysterically funny because we can't ignore what went on on this call. However, before we get to the funny parts, before we get to the dessert, we got to eat the main course and the main course is that provision that I found hidden inside the financials. This is a little gem that just gives so much value. Now check this out. One of the biggest knocks everybody has against this company is the lockup provisions. I was one of the first that actually exposed that, but other YouTubers also talked about it. I'm not going to take credit who said it first because it doesn't matter. I said it first. In any case, here's the thing. There's a lockup provision that expires on December 1st. Essentially, once it expires, the legacy, the original investors from Nikola will be allowed to sell their shares. So essentially what you have here, ladies and gentlemen, is a recipe for pandemonium. All of these shareholders who hold hundreds of millions of shares will be released into the wild to sell their shares, crashing the price of the stock. Nobody wants that. Well, maybe some people do want that, but I personally don't. Here's the thing. In order to prevent this Russian massacre, basically a bunch of Russians storming the first branch of McDonald's in Moscow in 1990, we don't want that, right? So instead of getting that, the company devised a plan to prevent that. And I was initially blown away. I was like, okay, what am I reading here? I saw a provision basically saying that the employees, executive and board members of the company and their affiliates agreed to extend their lockup until April, basically showing a vote of confidence in the company not trying to sell off as quickly as they can. I was like, I'm blown away. This is big stuff. This is really impressive. Even though like my gut feeling is go at Nikola, I was like, I gotta give them credit for that. That's very impressive. However, as I dug deeper, like I usually like to do, I found out that it isn't exactly what it seems to be. Like always, there's always this little asterisk that kind of hides the truth. So. What I found was very interesting. So essentially I started digging because there was no more information about it in the quarterly financials. I was like, that's weird. It sounds like everybody just froze and the lockup is postponed, but there's no more information. They don't say nothing more about it. Just a quick little paragraph. I was like, that's really weird. What are these guys hiding? So I started digging. What I found was that not everybody agreed to freeze. Essentially in another filing, there's another paragraph essentially saying that even though a lot of people agreed to freeze their lockup, there's still going to be 161 million shares released into the market on December 1st. Basically, what it means that 161 million shares did not agree to amend their lockup. And I was like, that's really interesting. Who might those 161 million shares be? And then I started doing some math. And again, this is just speculative. My opinion. Do your own research, blah, blah, blah. Maybe entirely wrong, incorrect, whatever. So my opinion, I started doing some math. I was like, okay, Trevor Milton owns 90 million shares. We know that Trevor and Mark own 40 million shares. That's 130. We know that Iveco owns 25 million shares. That's 155. And we know that William Milton, OTW LLC, that's Trevor's dad, he owns another 4 million. When you add up these numbers, what you get is 160 million shares, ladies and gentlemen. So I kind of understand Trevor basically saying, fuck you guys <laughs> and saying, I'm going to crash the stock and I'm going to cash out like crazy. I don't care what happens next. 
kind of sounds like this guy, allegedly in my opinion. And honestly, I get why Trevor would do that if that is the case. We don't know. Essentially, you know, he's been shunned. They took some shots at him and he doesn't really care anymore. He might just want to cash out. Who knows if that is actually true. However, here's the real story. Mark Russell, the current CEO of Nikola, doesn't want you to know. It's not like he is the sacrificial lamb. Because part of those 161 million is partially Mark's. Beyond the 90 million shares that are owned by Trevor directly, individually, there's about 40 million shares owned by a company called TNM, Trevor and Mark. And this is a joint LLC which they own together. Now, if TNM did not agree to actually freeze its lockup because Trevor, you know, cock blocked that, I don't know what happened. I'm just speculating. I mean, Mark can't do nothing about it, right? I mean, Trevor doesn't agree. However, I feel it's kind of convenient for Mark Russell to just lean on Trevor being an asshole, allegedly, and saying, well, Trevor didn't agree to freeze the lockup, so he's going to sell and I'm going to get half. Just to let you know, half, based on the current share price, is about $350 million each. So there's a big incentive here, allegedly, for Mark to say, hey, Trevor, you're a douchebag, but give me my $350 million, right? That's kind of funky. So the whole narrative mainstream media is selling you about Nikola's new management. By the way, new. Who's new there? They're all the old management. Steve Gursky, Kim Brady, Mark Russell. These are the same guys who fucked up. They're not new management. So basically the whole narrative they're selling, hey, we're not trying to cash out. We just froze our lockup. That is kind of true, but Mark Russell didn't do that. If TNM, Mark and Trevor's company, did not agree to freeze the lockup, it means that Mark Russell has only one choice. He has to come out and say, listen, guys, I have no choice. Trevor needs to agree to do that. He doesn't agree. So whatever cash we're getting from that sale, the same day, I'm putting it back into the company. I'm buying equity. I'm putting every single dollar back into the company. Unless he does that, he's complicit in what Trevor is doing. So he can't just play both sides. Can't say, hey, I'm the sacrificial lamb. I agreed, but Trevor didn't. If that's the case, you can't take the cash, dude. You have to put it back into the company as equity. Not as a loan, as equity. That's just my two cents. That's my theory. Do your own research. I don't know if that's accurate. That's just the numbers. The math seems to support what I'm saying here. But let's see how it plays out. Now, moving on to the funny parts. Well, one of the most amusing takeaways from the earnings call and the quarterly financials was the fact that Trevor Milton managed to spend over $2 million on freaking commuting to work. That's his expenses for commuting to work in the first three quarters of 2021. That is so much money. With that amount, we're going to freaking buy a human being to hand build the freaking badger and would have had leftovers to actually roll more trucks down the hill to defraud more investors, allegedly. Buy the shirt. Low quality, high revenue, you know what to do. On other earnings call related news, it seems that the GM deal is in limbo, the Badger is in limbo, but we do have some good and bad news. On the one hand, expenses have gone down dramatically and will continue to go down dramatically since Trevor Milton was voted off the island. The tribe has spoken. However, that also means the loss of a single item of revenue this company ever had, installing solar panels on Trevor's roof. That's now gone. What will they do? <laughs> but on a serious note, they do have 900 million, which sounds like a lot. Problem is, they have to pay for a lot of shit. They have to pay GM 700 million just to carry the transaction. They have to pay 600 to 900 million just to build the Coolidge Arizona factory. They have to pay to ramp up production. Somebody needs to pay Veco. They need to build hydrogen stations and they do have lawsuits. They have five class action lawsuits, two derivative lawsuits that might need some cash just to litigate, not to mention the fines they'll pay to the SEC or the actual compensation to the investors, not to mention the DOJ investigation. There's going to be a lot of shit they're going to be need to paying for. And 900 million, when you're burning for 40 million per month, will probably last you six months to 12 months if you're really, really good at it. Nikola needs cash and they need it fast. Problem is that following the Hindenburg report, which turned out to be mostly right, allegedly, they are radioactive. Nobody wants to come close to them. They won't get a decent loan. Their only alternative is to try to get cash from their investors who will get fed up pretty much for putting more money into this company. I don't think that's happening. Their other alternative is to go and borrow funds at crazy interest rates. Pretty much, you know, loan sharking. Now, companies that do that are pretty much on the verge of bankruptcy because what happens is that when you start borrowing expensive money, it's like a snowball effect. It's pretty much the end of the road. But that, believe it or not, is not even the craziest thing we learned yesterday. 
We learned yesterday that the SEC investigation, the DOJ investigation, and the class action lawsuits are as real as scrambled eggs on a Sunday. Unlike the Badger, these are actually happening. On September 15th, they actually got subpoenas for an SEC investigation. And they also got subpoenas for a grand jury from the DOJ, Southern District of New York. Heard about it? And there's five class action lawsuits have been filed and two derivative lawsuits that have been filed. Now, in case you don't know what a derivative lawsuit is, that's one of the craziest plays in the book. I'm really proud of whoever did it. That's just a crazy play. Essentially, that's one of the biggest head fakes in the game. A derivative lawsuit means that if I'm a shareholder, I'm getting the company to sue itself, pay for the lawsuit and the litigation costs to pay me restitution for losing money on the share price. That's crazy. That's even better than the class action lawsuit. Whoever thought about it was a freaking genius. So they have two of these five class action lawsuits, a grand jury and an SEC subpoena. So it seems, ladies and gentlemen, that what we have here is the big ass company rolling down the hill like a fiery ball of crap. That's horrendous to look at, but still you can't look away because it's fascinating. By the way, shout out to ass licking baboons because they're in the same category. Might be even more interesting, but this is one movie I want to watch the end. So let's start this quick hitters round right now. Ding, ding, ding. Nicola Badger, probably ain't happening. The GM partnership, probably ain't happening. We're out of cash, YOLO. Lawsuits, YOLO. SEC investigation, YOLO. DOJ grand jury subpoenas, YOLO. Which Coolidge Arizona factory? YOLO. <laughs> we have no friends. Nobody wants to touch us. We're really active as fuck. We don't have any clients for the tray. No infrastructure for hydrogen. We can't use the GM Altium battery or their infrastructure. This is going to hell, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, a huge shout out for our channel members, our patrons, people who are buying the merch. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys in the next video.